Late last week, a conversation between high-ranking Turkish officials was leaked online purporting to expose a plan that had been devised to use a staged attack on a Turkish target in Aleppo as a pretext to start a war with Syria. The leak of the conversation was considered sensitive enough that the government of Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan took the extraordinary measure of blocking YouTube in the country to prevent the population from learning about the story ahead of key local elections. That a false flag event was being planned as a pretext for war with Syria should come as no surprise to viewers of the alternative media, who know that this was precisely what happened last year when rebel forces used chemical weapons in Gouda in an attack that was falsely blamed on Syrian government forces, a fact that was confirmed by a recent MIT study into the incident. A study has now challenged the U.S. claim that Syrian government forces carried out the attack. The study is being conducted by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the MIT. Based on mathematical calculations, the study examined the range of the improvised rocket used in the attack, saying it was too short to have been launched from government-controlled areas. The MIT report concludes that based on the firing range and the troop locations, all possible launching points within a two-kilometer radius were in insurgent-controlled areas. And the fact that Turkey in particular would be actively coordinating a staged provocation within the borders of Syria should come as no surprise to followers of BoilingFrogsPost.com, which broke the story in November of 2011 of Syrian military defector Riyad al-Assad training Syrian militants at the American Incirlik base in Adana, Turkey. And it should come as no surprise to anyone that the corporate media in the U.S. have attempted to obscure the actual content of the conversations in their limited reporting on the subject. Where the head of Turkish intelligence says he will order his men to launch rockets at Turkish targets from within Syria, the BBC portrays this as undefined military operations. When the Turkish ambassador stresses that any attack on the tomb of Suleiman Shah would have to be perpetrated by Turkish agents and made to look like an Al-Qaeda attack, Reuters calls this a plan to secure the tomb. When the Turkish foreign minister points out that Prime Minister Erdogan sees any such attack as an opportunity for Turkey to strike, the Wall Street Journal portrays this as taking the threat of radical groups in Syria seriously. The disconnect between what the officials are actually talking about and the way it is being described is striking. Still, there remain many questions about the recording and where it came from, why it was released now, and what it means for the future of the NATO agenda in Egypt and for the Turkish government. Earlier this week, BoilingFrogsPost.com editor and founder Sibel Edmonds joined me on the Corbett Report to discuss the recording and what it means geopolitically. Well, uh, as far as the what it means, I don't think it means much. As far as what we have in our hands, we really don't know because the four most important questions are not answered and, and with this tape. One is who did the recording, which we have a pretty good guess, what was recorded, and, and I'll get to that in a second, and why it was recorded and released, and when it was recorded and when it was released. Uh, well, we know when it was released. Uh, it was recorded long time ago. Uh, and as far as who uh, recorded this, we have a pretty good idea that it is uh, it's going to be Gulen, Fethullah Gulen, Imam Gulen related uh, network insiders, the ones who have penetrated the Turkish you know, military, Turkish police, and of course, as we can see, the office of prime minister uh, very successfully. And also, uh, the, the other important thing is with this authentication of the tape. Now, uh, there are two ways of authenticating, or the two grounds. One is the voice, and it hasn't been authenticated, but I would say they are th authentic. Uh, it's pretty obvious there. But I listened to the tape several times, and I looked at the transcripts as well. And to me, what it seems uh, very important here is the transcript, and when you listen to the tape, you see a lot of inconsistencies and 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 uh, which points to that this was not recorded during one meeting 
and with those uh, individual present, it looks and it sounds like uh, a patchwork, meaning um, m much of these conversations were taken from various contexts during different times and then they were connected together and put together in the state and they have done a pretty shoddy job with that. <laughs> Obviously they, they maybe rushed it, I don't know, they haven't done a good job but this uh, recording and the transcript is not coming from one particular meeting and and it's very um, easy to do when, when you can take sentences out of different contexts from different times and put it together you can arrive at a totally different uh, whole different meaning so that hasn't happened but again from looking at it I'm not a forensic expert but I did work for the FBI and I did do translations on tapes like this, live or pre-recorded, and uh, and this does not sound authentic in terms of being uh, recorded during the same time. And as far as why it had it was released, again, that is pretty obvious here. It was not released to increase uh, public awareness or or for altruistic reasons. They released this tape a few days before the local elections, a uh, very highly strategic sensitive elections in Turkey. So, uh, so the intent is extremely important to see, you know, what was the intention behind releasing these tapes and uh, the intentions are not good <laughs> or it's not for the public knowledge or because there are some people who are concerned about a war with Syria. It, it has nothing to do with any of these reasons. The intent is pure and simple. They wanted to affect the influence, the elections result. So that that's for that. And, and uh, another important thing that for me shows that this has been highly edited and, and tempered with the recordings. Again, I'm very familiar with discussions uh, that takes place, uh, take place within the diplomatic communities and, and various governmental entities um, as part of my work with the FBI and, and uh, especially with Turkey there would never ever be such a meeting, long meeting on this kind of a topic without the mentioning of minimum of hundred times at least every other in every other sentence uh, mentioning of Pentagon, NATO, the United States because as we know Turkey is part of the NATO, He's a, Turkey is a member of NATO and of course Turkey uh, was stopped later in this whole process with Syria from going even at it alone because they were already bogged down in, into this whole mess with Syria that was completely crafted by, by the United States of course, Pentagon. Uh, so there is no mention that itself will tell you that that was sanitized and the tapes were heavily sanitized and why would they sanitize the parts that have to do with the United States and NATO and their positions? Well, of course, that's because the actors that are involved that, you know, did the recording and released it, this is Fethullah Gulen, which is completely under CIA's management. Uh, Fethullah Gulen has been with Langley CIA since 1997, has been working, uh, it's, 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 the, it's the operation of the CIA and NATO, Gladio B, that we have spoken about. Uh, so... As you see, they are basically protecting their masters by sanitizing the tapes from all the information or conversations or points made that would have had or would have had uh, Pentagon or the United States or NATO. But I can guarantee you that there would never be a meeting like this, a topic like this, where you won't hear several times, dozens of times, Pentagon well, NATO or particular people within the NATO, it just doesn't take place because it doesn't. It hasn't and it won't and it doesn't. Although the leaked recording makes a brief mention of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and the U.S. government, this latest development, like so many other developments in Turkish politics, seems to studiously avoid, or to have been studiously edited, to remove more substantial revelations of U.S. State Department and Pentagon cooperation with the Turkish forces, such as the role of Inserlik as a staging ground for these Syrian terrorist insurgents. Instead, the recording has to be seen in terms of the struggle between the CIA-backed Gulenists and Prime Minister Erdogan, a former favored ally of the Western powers who has fallen out of favor in recent years. Although intended to derail Erdogan's party in the recent crucial elections, it ended up having no noticeable impact, with the AKP claiming a landslide victory in the contest. In fact, this conversation leak is just one of a number of similar operations in recent months, including the leak of a conversation implicating Erdogan in the release of a sex tape in a political scandal, 
and a video of the Prime Minister telling his son to hide money from investigators. These previous leaks led to the Turkish government's attempt to ban Twitter use in the country in the name of fighting an international conspiracy against the government, a ban that backfired. Can you imagine there are international conspiracies? Twitter and Twitter. We have a court order now. We will wipe out all of these. The international community can say this, can say that. I don't care at all. Everyone will see how powerful the Republic of Turkey is. Twitter says anyone in Turkey can still tweet via SMS text, in other words. And many are reportedly using a service provided by Google to get around the block. <coughs> Turkey, uh, Twitter users in Turkey may actually increased since the government crackdown. On Thursday, have a look at the numbers. On Thursday, there were 138% more tweets from Turkey than on the day before, according to the analytics firm Brand Watch. As Edmonds explains, however, just because the most recent tape was not leaked for the purpose of derailing any false flag operation, it does have that unintended consequence. Very interesting indeed, and I think one of the most interesting parts of this is that even though it wasn't released for altruistic purposes, and even though it was heavily redacted, it could still have a good effect on at least getting people to question the in the event of the wake of whatever tragedy comes along. So hopefully, Absolutely. hopefully we can use something of this. Positive externality, you know, you have negative, this is positive externality, no matter what, it has nothing to do with elections or anything, it put it within people's consciousness both at home in Turkey, but also abroad. So that, that, that's a good thing. And saying that even if that was going to, you know, take place, it's not going to just for the fact that it was released, though that was not the intention of releasing these tapes, because it's, oh, that scenario is not going to work. <laughs> uh, that hand was played before. As to what will happen in the future, pieces continue to be moved around on the Turkish chessboard. Earlier this week, Erdogan's lawyers pressed charges on former intelligence official Ali Fuat Yilmazer, reputedly an operative for the insurgent Gulen gang. To keep up to date with these developments, and what they mean for the future of the region, please stay tuned to BoilingFrogsPost.com. This video is brought to you by the subscribers of BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information on this and other topics, please go to BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information and commentary from James Corbett, please go to CorbettReport.com.